week's episode of Seraph of the End. The battle against Crowley Useford finally begins, and as predicted, it doesn't exactly go well. The action quotient was certainly raised in this week's episode, mostly in the second half, but honestly this was a pretty entertaining episode of Seraph of the End, because what started out as a big attack mission has suddenly turned into an attack and rescue mission, because a lot of soldiers have been captured by the vampires and are literally being crucified on these giant crosses. Well, not really crucified, they're tied up, but you can get the symbolism there. So they're going to have to break up their team, and they're going to have to save them, as well as having to fight against Crowley Useford, who is so obnoxiously powerful, it's almost kind of annoying. I don't really have much of a problem with his two assistants, Chess and Horn. They certainly have some bouncy personalities. At the beginning of the episode, they try to take out Crowley with a sniping attack from Yoichi, which is honestly pretty cool. I love the look of his Gekoin, I believe that's what he calls it, which is that giant green and black bird, which just explodes right into the office that Crowley and his friends are hanging out in, but he is actually able to grab this bird and crush it with his bare hands. That's pretty freaking hacked. He even has the nerve to just continue sitting there in that giant gaping hole that was just created by Yoichi's attack, as if he's saying, go ahead, try it again, try my bitch. There's also a little bit of conflict amongst the team where Shinya comes up with these two plans. They could kill all of the hostages and leave, or they could try to go down there and save the hostages, but that could result in even more of them dying. Obviously, he wants to go with the plan where more people survive, but Yu is there and he has to save everyone, so that's the plan that they're going to go along with. There also seems to be a little bit of tension all of a sudden between Shinua and Yu, where she's trying to take charge of the mission, trying to let him know that, look, after this mission is over, after like five minutes, we're leaving. We're not saving anyone else. It's done. But we know that's not going to happen, and it gets proven in this episode, which makes you realize why was she even trying to do that in the first place? Why is she trying to rein in Yu all of a sudden? Maybe it's because she has intense feelings for him. Maybe it's just because she's trying to protect him. All I know is it's sort of weird in this episode, because even after the five minutes are up, they just continue to try and save people. But while all of this is going on, you have Gurren and Shinya who are teaming up against Crowley in a pretty cool fight scene, but Crowley just completely destroys them. They can't even touch this guy. And like I said, the smirk never leaves his face. And one of my biggest annoyances in just about any anime or movie or something happened in this episode where Gurren was actually attacking Crowley and as he was attacking him, Shinya was sneaking around to the other side and he jumped up and he was getting ready to shoot him, but he had to say something. Why does he have to try and be an 80s action star? He could have just been all sneaky and shot him at point blank range. Maybe then they could have actually hurt him. And this happens all the time in anime series when someone's like, where'd the enemy go? Where'd the enemy go? As soon as the en enemy pops up, they go, gotcha, or they have to say something. Why do they do this all the time? It's not a really good move. You are basically announcing where you are and giving the enemy an opportunity to actually escape. None of the attacks that Gurren and Shinya throw at Crowley's way do anything. In fact, he's actually able to deflect one of Shinya's tigers, which ends up hitting him in the chest and he ends up getting severely wounded, and they're pretty much almost killed, and at the very end of the episode, just out of nowhere, like the incredible freaking Hulk, you just explodes out of the ground as he gets ready to fight Crowley, but it looks like he's about to be messed up, so someone else is probably about to jump in the way. All I know is that ends this week's episode, which honestly was pretty freaking awesome. So what's the rundown on this week's episode of Seraph of the End? Aside from some pacing issues at the very beginning of the episode, this was a pretty solid action episode of the series. I was kind of hoping maybe they would expand a little bit more on Narumi's team, because I want to see these guys in action a little bit more, especially because, you know, they're just so cool and unique and they have their own cool designs and powers, so I'd just like to see more from their team. But still, this was a pretty cool episode that was very tense, especially because they added that whole new element of their actually being hostages, and just them up on crosses just created this imagery, which was uh, pretty freaking intense. I also just, you know, I harp on Crowley being annoying, but he is actually a great villain, because I just love to hate him. Now, of course, you're going to have to have a little bit of suspension of disbelief, because it almost seems like Yu is going to be the one who's going to be able to defeat Crowley, and, you know, it makes sense. He's the main character. He's got some super secret chosen one powers that we haven't really seen in action like fully yet. We've been seeing hints to it, but maybe this will be a good opportunity to finally unleash them on the enemy. Or this could be an opportunity for a very big character death. I was almost convinced that Shinya was going to die in this episode. Hell, Gurren was on the chopping block, especially with Crowley putting his sword right through his shoulder. 
On the technical side of things, this episode looked pretty decent. You know, the characters always look really distinct and awesome, and uh, most of the action scenes look pretty good, but definitely not the best stuff that I've seen from the series thus far. And like I said, my only complaints with the episode is some of the parts are a little slow at the beginning of the episode, and every single time you and Shinoa's team decide to remind themselves that they're best buddies and they just decide to start jerking themselves off, I just think that gets a little old from time to time. The power of friendship does not belong in this post-apocalyptic vampire world, but it's something that they're going to continue to shove down our throats anyway. That being said, if you just kick back and relax and don't think about it too much, Seraph for the End is still a pretty fun anime series. Nothing groundbreaking, but still something really fun to watch at the same time. So if you like cool action, cool looking weapons, and vampires, especially vampire girls with very big personalities, then check out Seraph of the End. You might see something you like. And manga fans, check out the series too. I would love to hear your thoughts about it because everybody's talking about the manga version, which I have not looked at quite yet, and I don't know if it's doing it justice or not. So while this week's episode did have a lot of action and it was really intense, I still think it was just sort of an okay episode of the series. Mostly for some of the slow parts at the beginning, but everything that was there was still really fun, but not really mind-blowing. So I'm going to give this week's episode a 3 out of 5. Check it out, Seraph of the End fans. You might see something you like. But before you guys leave today, if you did watch this week's episode of Seraph of the End, please tell me what you thought about it in the comment section below. Did you have a favorite action scene from this episode? Who is going to defeat Crowley? Is someone going to die? And what do you want to see from the rest of Seraph of the End? Please tell me in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like the video if you would like. It would really help us out a lot. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you'll see all of our latest anime and manga reviews and our weekly podcast show, which is pretty freaking awesome. Make sure to check that out. And you guys can also follow us on social media. Thank you guys again for watching. And as always, stay dandy, baby.